Okay, now we've checked our primers with oligoanalyzer to see if they can do anything with themselves. And actually the primer blast program has tested if the primers will have homology to anything in the database. So that's fine. The last thing we want to check is really, and the last thing we will test is if the product will have any kind of secondary structure that would interfere with the binding of the primers. And to do this, we have to do a number of things. First of all, I will check out for the primer pair called number one. It says it starts at position eight in the sequence we uploaded and ends at 152. So that's the size of the product. These 145 bases long. So to analyze for that, what I've done is I put it into Word, as low tech as it can be, and eight base pairs, three, six, seven, eight, three, six, eight. There are probably smarter ways to do this, but hey, low tech works for me. So what I'm doing now is just getting the sequences in place. So this is 120, 24, here we are. So here we have our sequence which is going to be the PCR product we will amplify upon. I copy this and I go to the mfold web server. mfold is something that will look at secondary structure. As you can see, it's a group, a group of people of institute where they worked a lot with RNA because RNA makes tremendous amounts of secondary structure when it's single stranded. And to go from there and then to check for DNA, that's a simple way to do that. What you could have done here, you could have taken the whole sequence we found, uh, these more than 1,000 base pairs, but that's not really relevant. We want to see just the size of the product, how that would be. So I paste the sequencing from Word. You have to say formal sequence for this to work. And uh, you see, I took a little too many uh, nucleotides with me. That's fine. This is just for illustration purposes. I put in, and this is some knowledge I got from the kit you're going to use for qPCR. It can be something else, sometimes you don't know because a lot of the manufacturers don't tell what kind of buffer concentrations, etc., magnesium concentration they have. That's a secret, trade secret, but I got some insert, uh, inside knowledge from uh, Barrett, so I know the magnesium concentration and the it's not really sodium, the use of potassium doesn't really matter, it's just something that makes the ionic uh, concentrations. And then you can see you can work with a lot of different factors and variables. And to be fairly honest, I have no clue of most of it. One thing we need to change is we can we got an annealing temperature which is 60 degrees for this PCR. You could see the temperatures if we look at E. Is this the right one? E, yes. Nope. Got too many things open. And uh, here we are. Indian temperature 59.97. That's 60 degrees. So we put that in instead of 37. And then we say full DNA. And it will take a while. Sometimes a little faster than others. And now we got it. Tells us the concentration. So that's fine. And here we have individual structures with fairly low delta G. So that means there might be a chance, risk, we should say, that we will see some secondary structures. Mm -hmm. I just take a look for one of them. Go for the JPEG. You can see there's a number of different formats. Usually I use the JPEG because it gives you the best view of what is happening. And here we see some of the things, and it might be actually what could create problems. One of the primers will attach in this area here. And for the primer, the three prime end will be in this area. So at least four of the bases in the end will not be involved in any six structure. If this structure is apparent, it might inhibit 
the primer's ability to attach to the product and amplify again. And the other end, again, secondary structure starts at 3, 4, uh, nucleus high number 6. So the end is free, but there's quite a lot of secondary structure here. Okay, based on my experience, the most important thing is that the end of the product is free. So we can actually attach our primers. But there is a lot of secondary structure. So when I see something like this, I would usually go for another primer pair instead of... Because this product seems to have quite a lot of secondary structure. And that might inhibit uh, your PCR. There's not really any reason to go and have another look because structure number two would be something similar and three and four and so on. It's just a little bit about what some of the things can do. By the way, you see, we have told you that G's and C's pairs and A's and T's pairs, but actually T and G can pair. Not that good, but they can actually participate in secondary structure, as you can see here. Uh, I think they may be able to make a single uh, hydrogen bond, so they can participate in the creation of secondary structure. Based on this, I would go through the other primer pairs designed and see if we got less problems of that. It might not be a problem, it might not be an issue, but it can be that you will get amplification, but at much lower efficiency than you would ex uh, would like to have and expect to have. So, this was info. Just a thing about the address. It is in the presentation I give you on the website. It might be different because it's sometimes a move server. So you can the best way to find it is simply to go to Google and say info. And you see, we got the right address, but it might switch. So occasionally it switches. Yes, that was words about info. Good luck with that.